Congo prison, Mexico. Isolated in the barren Baja desert, this fortress of discipline and punishment is designed to contain and control over a thousand inmates. My name is Paul Connolly and I'm on a mission to experience life as an inmate in one of Mexico's toughest prisons. This is stark and cold and imposing. I'm given rare access to Echo Block, a maximum security lockup for drug cartel bosses and hitmen. The Watchtower snipers reveal what it's like to be the prison's first line of defense. Do you think you could kill someone? Yeah. And I spend the most nervous night of my life banged up with some serious criminals. I'm only ever one decision or one quick move away from being seriously hurt in here. This is Mexico, the real Mexico. I'm out here in the desert, deep into cartel country, and behind me is El Hongo Prison, a maximum security complex where many of the most dangerous criminals here in Mexico are locked up. And the main reason for that can be found 30 miles west in Tijuana, the chaotic border town that's become a virtual war zone, where ruthless drug cartels fight for lucrative drug smuggling routes into the US. It was this vicious and violent turf war that filled Tijuana city jail, La Mesa, to bursting point. A tinderbox waiting to catch fire, and in 2008, it did exactly that. Triggered by the death of an inmate, the jail was rocked by two days of violent riots. The desperate and bloody battle to regain control spilled onto the surrounding streets, leaving 23 prisoners dead. To prevent a repeat of the riots, the most dangerous ringleaders were rounded up and shipped off to El Hongo, here in the Baja Desert. And that's where I'm headed. In a first for British television, I've been given unlimited access to El Hongo. Over the next week, I'll be locked inside its walls as an inmate, discovering firsthand how it's earned its reputation as one of Mexico's toughest and most secure slammers. So they're making sure here that you're going nowhere whilst in transit. Handcuffed here, shackled around my feet as well. So, I mean, there's absolutely no way of getting out of this. This is arid desert. This is as stark as it gets. Anybody with an idea to escape at this stage, it's extremely unlikely. And even if you did, you're not going far, you're not going fast. The El Hongo prison complex lies just 10 miles south of the US border. This sprawling facility, designed to function like an American Supermax penitentiary, consists of communal cells and standalone high security blocks. The most notorious is Echo Block, a control unit where high profile and high risk inmates are held. Heavily armed guards secure the prison's fortified perimeter 24 hours a day. As soon as I'm through the door, the booking in process begins. Full name? Paul Dermot Connell. Where are you from? Uh, from Dublin, in Ireland. Discipline and a zero-tolerance approach to drugs, alcohol and tobacco are strictly enforced in El Hongo. For every second of every day, prisoners are monitored and controlled by the guards. They don't want another La Mesa. Take off my clothes. All of my clothes? Yeah, sure. Turn around. 
Okay, give me a letter. I've only been here a few minutes, but already the guards are laying down the law. Good shoes. Any shoes? We don't go into a room, a private room for this. People just strip in the hallway. They've been told to treat me like a regular prisoner. Just here in the hallway, huh? This is where I stop being me and start becoming a number. Okay, Camina de este lado. You keep on the right side. It is roasting hot in this fortress of razor wire reinforced steel and concrete. It makes me feel claustrophobic, even a little panicked. So it all starts to feel very real at this point. Point. As I move deeper and deeper into the complex, I start to feel disorientated. There's so many heavy-duty gates, locks and carbon copy corridors that I lose all sense of direction. I also get my first taste of prison rules. Every time I pass a prison official or a visitor, I'm forced to face the wall. For me? All right. This is the first time a foreign journalist has been granted permission to sleep in an El Hongo cell overnight. And to be honest, I'm nervous. Very. So this is me, number 53. This is my bunk. This is the extent of what I was given, so just a little plastic spoon, little plastic cup. I think this is my spot up here for my belongings, whatever I have. A concrete floor, rows of metal bunks and bright glaring lights. This cell is built for punishment, not for comfort. There is a mattress, then these two blankets, and I'm told you know, we are out in the middle of the desert, it gets freezing apparently at night here, it goes sub-zero the temperature. It's not just the cold that's going to keep me awake, though. I've been told that my new cellmates include some really serious criminal characters. Any second, my bunkmates are going to spill in the door after they've finished up their day's work. And I suppose I'd be lying to you if I said that I wasn't just a little bit anxious about meeting them. But I'm going to have to sleep in here. And there's minimal protection. If one of them takes a dislike to me, I could be in real danger. So there's quite a bit of ruckus, quite a bit of noise, and I think that means that the rest of my cell and bunkmates are on the way down. But there's no turning back now. I'm about to be locked inside this cell with 37 hardened criminals. Coming up. I'm banged up overnight in El Hongo. I have to go to sleep here. That's definitely the part that I'm most anxious about. And I take my chances in the prison showers. I'm only ever one decision or one quick move away from being seriously hurt in here. My name's Paul Connolly, and I'm about to spend the night locked inside a cell here in Mexico's unforgiving El Hongo prison. And I won't be alone. Many of my cellmates are criminals with a history of serious violence. I've absolutely no idea what the etiquette is in a situation like this. I mean, do you say hello, do you shake hands, or do you just keep your head down and be the strong, silent type? So I suppose it's not really an ordinary social situation when you're meeting serious criminals in a prison. What's your name? Uh, Ariel. Ariel, good to meet you.
The reception so far has been all right. Better than I expected. A little bit of slagging in Spanish, I'm sure. I don't know what they're talking about, but I can I can tell it's directed at me. But there is a few lads as well that don't seem completely delighted that I'm here. They could clearly do without the attention. They're not making any eye contact. They're not looking to shake my hand. They want nothing to do with me. So I suppose the paranoia in me is saying tonight that maybe those are the fellas just to keep an eye on. It's evening roll call. Guards use high-tech security measures to match inmates' fingerprints and pictures. Oh. Oh. The guard commander pulls me to one side with some advice about staying safe behind bars. Be friendly, but don't make friends because people will try to get information from you to take advantage of you. When I first arrived, my plan was to take people at face value, but now I'm just not sure. The commander tells me to talk with Timothy, a computer hacker serving 10 years. He, I'm told, will give me a breakdown of the big house rules. These are the regulations right here. Okay. Your uniforms, how you're supposed to go out with your hands behind your back. But if I'm going to stay safe, penned in with 37 of these blokes, I need to know the unwritten rules as well. We don't invade another person's privacy. Nobody has the right to go into another person's bunk unless you have permission from that person. You respect the privacy of another person. Uh, if he's using the restroom, obviously you're not gonna go and have a conversation with him, all right? Because the toilets have no doors. Right, that's because in other prisons, they'll close the door and they'll hit on, the, on somebody they want to punish, right? Lights are gonna be out in about an hour and a half. And that's what I'm going to be by myself, locked behind these bars in a cell with 37 other blokes. That's definitely the part that I'm most anxious about. Now this cell is calm, controlled, but that, I'm told, can change in an instant. In 2013, prisoners in this block sparked off a full-scale riot. Guards were taken hostage and an inmate killed, so I know I've got to stay alert. This is technically lights out, but the lights don't go out. Apparently they stay on all night. What's troubling me now is the types of crimes these guys are in for. And they might all seem like reasonably decent fellas today, but you don't really know any of them, you know? And, uh, yeah, what just keeps going through my head is how vulnerable I am here, how exposed. You know, if someone decides in the middle of the night they've taken disliking to me being here, then it can all happen very quickly. And I think that's what's probably going to end up keeping me awake. It's about half one in the morning, and I haven't caught a wink of sleep yet. What feels like every five or ten minutes, one of the inmates will keep going within a few feet of the back of my bunk. Just feel on edge. I know it's not exhausted. It's 4.30 in the morning, and in El Hongo, that means breakfast is served. Slaves to this strict routine, the prisoners are up and ready to eat. A lie-in isn't an option either. Break the rules and you could be slapped with up to a month in solitary. How do you sleep good? Uh, not really, no. <laughs> kind of yeah, kind of strange. Didn't really sleep much. If I did, it was just in short bursts. And then whenever I, you know, whenever I did wake up, you know that sort of couple of seconds where you don't quite know where you are and you're disorientated, and then you realize you're in a Mexican jail. <laughs> so 
<laughs> that was a little strange. Gracias. Gracias. What, what is this? What am, what am I about to gobble? Winnie's are the Mexicana. Okay. <laughs> Spices and jalapenos. Jalapenos. Okay. It makes it very tasty. Jalapenos at half four in the morning. <laughs> why do they keep the light on all night? Why isn't why doesn't lights out mean lights out? There's a camera in there. In the dormitory area. And they need the lights on to make sure that everybody's fine, everybody's doing all right. To stop people from getting in getting in fights. Yeah. Although CCTV cameras cover every move the inmates make, there is one blind spot, the showers. If a prisoner is going to be attacked, it's most likely going to happen in here. Is that water hot now? There's no hot water to November. No hot water to when? November. We're probably not going to hang around that long. Obviously, I've heard all the horror stories about what happens in prison showers. I've noticed everybody has half cut off toothbrushes. What's what's that about? Okay, that's a policy for state prisons. Yeah. That they'll file down the end yeah. and use it as a dagger. Somebody can use this yeah. as a shank. I'm hoping the cold water is all I've got to worry about. I've only been here about 24 hours now. But already it's becoming quite easy to forget where I am and who I'm in here with. You know, the reality of it is, but I'm only ever one decision or one quick move away from being seriously hurt in here. But I do need to keep my head on, you know. So far, it seems I've managed to stay on the right side of these guys, but it turns out that's not all down to me. Ariel, one of the cell's most powerful and respected inmates, has issued a block-wide warning. I'm grateful, but wary of what he might want in return. He is, after all, serving 16 years for kidnapping after a drug deal went wrong. What are you making? Where's the where's it? I'm making a little bag for my sister. Ah, so, a little... so she can put her mobile phone in. Ariel tells me he took action because he was owed $100,000. And why did he owe you the money? What had you done for him? Droga. Yeah. Drugs. Marijuana. Marijuana. It was drug money. It was a debt he had to pay me, one way or another. Did any of your crew get locked up? A friend of mine, Mario. He was also sent here for that crime. What is the lito? I mean, a hundred grand is a lot of product. Did you grow it? Did you deal it? Yo, I did a bit of everything, right? I've grown it, I've harvested it, I've packed it, and I have moved it. You were a drug trafficker then? Si. Yes, that's what I used to do. So what was the most amount of drugs that you moved in your time as a trafficker then? 450 kilos. What's the street? value of that? $150,000 if sold at the border. How many times a month or a year were you moving consignments that were that big? Once a month. So you could, if you wanted to, earn millions? Yes, but you know what? In this business, as soon as you have the money, you spend it. Because it doesn't matter. Tomorrow or next week, you'll get some more. All that cash counts for nothing on the inside, though. Here in El Hongo, you have to earn your benefits as a prisoner, and you've got to earn your privileges, and how everybody does that is through work. Plenty of my cellmates work in the prison factory, but today, my job is in the kitchen. It's about 35 degrees outside, so God knows how hot it must be in here. So how many prisoners are you guys cooking for uh, every day? Thousand. 
Lemon hundred, something like that. Lemon hundred. Lemon hundred. Yeah. You're one of the biggest restaurants in Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big one, he's big. <laughs> one of the loyalist clientele. Everybody comes back here. I can tell. Everyone comes back. <laughs> It's crazy knowing that the bloke with the meat cleaver could be a violent criminal. In El Hongo, the guards never switch off. Can I ask what you're in for? I steal some some places with a gun. Armed robbery. Something like that. <laughs> Something like that. You would not want to spill this. <laughs> it's heavy. With lunch prepared, it's time to deliver it to more than 1,100 hungry inmates. Not easy to keep her steady. <laughs> Keeping someone waiting for grub on the outside is no big deal, but in here, it's one of the little things that can cause tension and riots. So, I better get a move on. This is not something you want to go spilling down a hill. It's after one now, very much lunchtime, so the lads in B1 in my cell are going to be starving, so they'll be happy to see me. So apparently the trick is to make sure I get at least one bit of meat in each one of these, otherwise I'm going to be leaving someone hungry and unhappy. From the looks I'm getting, I don't think the lads are all that happy about me mucking up their system. They'll have counted exactly how much they need for all of the prisoners in all of these different wings, so I'm fairly sure that I just offset the balance and someone is going to be hungry and someone's going to be looking for me tonight. So, quit while I'm ahead. Keeping inmates well fed is one way of reducing tensions in El Hongo. But the main way the prison avoids violence is by keeping its most dangerous inmates segregated in the Supermax Echo Block. And it's here that I'm hoping to be allowed access later in my stay. Those prisoners that behave themselves in El Hongo live in communal blocks with more space. But that space is, of course, constantly monitored and controlled by CCTV cameras and by snipers stationed in the watchtowers. In the rec yard, I meet with Mario. Now, he was the muscle during my cellmate Ariel's kidnapping plot that went wrong. He gives me the inside track and the kinds of men I'm sharing a cell with. The best of the worst. <laughs> Any kind you want. Murderers. Murderers. Rapists. Kidnapping. Rapists. Did you feel like you were in danger at any point? I was in one cell. One guy tried uh, to rob uh, three birds, the tennis shoes, for another friend. And I get in a fight. And I beat the guy. And then he go for more people. And they came to my cell. Yeah. Like uh, 10 or 15 people more. But it's Triana. A lot of them have blades, you know. They wanted to stab me. We all started fighting with bats, but they broke my fingers. So, for that, I me quebraron los dedos. So, in here, cabrón. And this is all for the same fight? See. Yes, I had both my arms in plaster. But I survived. The prisoners that attacked Mario threatened to kill him, but on the outside, during the kidnap plot, Mario was the one doing the threatening. To have that kind of control over someone, to know that they're terrified of you, scared that you might kill them, does that, does that make you feel powerful? Is that, you know, is that slightly a, addictive, a real rush? You know how uh, is the, the rice when you ride on motorcycles? Yeah. When I have uh, somebody, uh, same rush. Same adrenaline rush, riding a motorcycle. That's pointing a gun in someone's face. I'm insane. Mario's been banged up in El Hongo for years, but his time in prison is nearly done. I've been living here about uh, 16 years. Yeah. And I'm going tomorrow. <laughs> I'm free tomorrow. It must be incredible for you to know that you're going to be walking out of here tomorrow. How are you feeling? Well, I feel happy because I see a lot of friends that they don't leave. Over the 15 or 16 years that you've been locked up, Mario, what have you missed most? A lot of things I miss you. I miss my people, I miss my food, I 
missed? Most food I've missed. The French toast, I like a lot. I like the French toast. Hello, hello. 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 And I go inside El Hongo's infamous echo block, home to the jail's most dangerous inmates. That is the most intimidating prison cell block that I have ever been inside. My name is Paul Connolly, and I'm serving time as a prisoner in Mexico's El Hongo jail. This bleak concrete fortress is surrounded by scorched desert scrub. Escape is next to impossible. But those foolish enough to try will be up against an army of highly trained guards. With orders, shoot to kill if required. Inside, inmates spend most of their time working under the prison's strict regime. They only get to let off steam with limited yard time. There's an awful lot of criminals with bats knocking about, so... So which one do you think? This one? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah? Okay. All right. Wish me luck, huh? <laughs> That's beginner's luck, if ever I've seen it. Just like every other aspect of life in El Hongo, Big Brother is watching. Did I get it? Did I get it? Woo! Beginner's luck. I'll take it. And I'm out. I've now been here for a length of time. It sort of allows me to forget where I am, forget my surroundings, forget really that I'm in a Mexican jail with very serious criminals. But then, you know, you look all around and there are guards that double as, as snipers. There's razor wire everywhere. Could be in a park, you know, but we're not. With the game over, word has reached the B-Block team that Mario is angry and upset. Today was meant to be his big day. After 15 years banged up for kidnapping, he was due to be released, but there's been a problem. I was supposed to be getting out today, but now I'm not. Jail officials gave Mario the wrong release date. Uh, creo que no. They've given me another year and a half to do. So I'm not getting out now until 2017. April 2017. So you have another year and a half to and do a year and a half. This is Mexico, the real Mexico. Yeah. <laughs> but you must be angry, genuinely. How are you feeling? Honestly, I'm feeling sad. They made me angry, they made me sad. See, they, I want to cry, but I had to be uh, hard, you know? Brave. Yeah, I had to be hard because this is the law. You were ready to go. You would one foot out that door. Yeah, that's so difficult because I have a lot of things you know, clothes, cosmetics, something. And I was killed away. Hey, you know, our friends, take, 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 take this, this, because mm. I'm leaving tomorrow. So this is yes. like a nightmare. Like a nightmare, yeah. I can see Mario is devastated, but he can't show any weakness in front of the other inmates. Having a spun out prisoner can't unsettle the block, so the guards will be looking for warning signs that could lead to potential trouble. I'm halfway through my stretch in El Hongo and I've experienced the prison's harsh regime as an inmate. But now I'm switching sides.
Uh, it's 7 a.m. Time for a changing of the guard. I'm going to discover firsthand what life is like for the guards on El Hongo's front line. Están trabajando en un centro penitenciario, así que siento. The guards know they must remain vigilant at all times. They haven't forgotten the La Mesa prison riots that left 23 inmates dead and several guards seriously injured. Violence and breakouts by cartel prisoners have also rocked the Mexican jail system elsewhere. So this is home for the next 24 hours? Yeah, for the next 24 hours, this is going to be in my house and I'm going to protect it. I'm on duty with one of El Hongo's sharp shooters. So we got the shotgun. One, and two, three. There is no shots inside. Okay. Hector's these... shotgun is the first weapon he'll reach for if an inmate tries to escape. Okay. So these are non-lethal? It's rubber, yeah. Okay. It's not lethal, but you know it hurts so much. It's going to stop. Yeah. Okay. If the non-lethal option doesn't stop them in their tracks, Hector has something more deadly in his armory. Live bullets. This is yeah, real live. bullets. Okay. Real? This is the last thing you have to do to shut this. This is the absolute last resort. Yeah. The last. The terror guards must also keep watch for threats from outside. Even though El Hongo prison is isolated in the middle of the desert, being close to the US border means heavily armed drug cartels operate in this area. And they have more than enough firepower to mount an attack on the prison. That leaves our Hector feeling exposed and vulnerable. They have more equipment than we, but we have to face it what we, we have. That's it. Yeah. And sometimes it worries me because maybe they get a bazooka or something like that. Then far away they can reach me. Do you think if it came to it, if you did see someone about to fire on you from outside here, Hector, do you think you could use that weapon? Do you think you could kill someone? Yeah, it's their life or my life, so I'm going to take care of my life. The main reason El Hongo could be targeted lies in the infamous Echo Block, where cartel members are locked up. In Echo, we have kidnappers, murderers, cartel leaders. Echo Block also houses gangsters and violent criminals from other prisons. When something happens in La Mesa, in Mexicali, in Ensenada, they take them here. After several days of negotiation, the prison finally agrees to let me go inside Echo Block. There is a completely different feel around here. This is stark and cold and imposing and intimidating to say the least and that's all for good reason because this is where the very serious criminals are held. Cartel hitmen and serial killers. I'm about to go in and take a look for myself. So that's your first indicator that we're in somewhere completely different. Guard dogs, attack dogs are a feature of the Echo Wing that you don't see anywhere else in the prison. That's just further evidence that these are pretty serious boys locked up in here. In Echo Wing, what's the longest sentence that's been handed out to one of the prisoners that's here at the moment? Up until now, it's a 92-year sentence. 92 years here? Mm -hmm. Do they see outside? Do they get yard time? That's correct. They have the right to time outside, to phone calls and to family visits. I've only been in here a short while, but the atmosphere is oppressive. I can almost feel the misery seeping through the walls. It chills me to the bone, and I'm struggling to get my head around how, psychologically, you would survive in here. 
Umberto is 13 years into a 22-year sentence. I'm here for homicide. So you're here for murder? For murder. That's why I have to be here, you know. Umberto has been moved out of the general prison population into Echo Block uh, for his own protection. The last year, I tried, I tried to kill myself. I tried to suicide, to commit suicide. I tried to kill by myself, you know, because uh, when I was depressed, I was thinking that that was the only the only way to get out from here. Do you still think you might try to hurt yourself again? I guess. I guess, because... Well, sometimes, you know, I have, I have enough contact with my family, you know, and because I'm, uh, I'm not from here, from this state. Okay. Right here, I don't have, I have no family. I don't have no family. And uh, I have no visit. Uh, uh, I don't have no visit. Why is that? Well, my, my family, they are poor people. They, they came, they came, came here. You know. They can come here to, to visit me. I have to do my time here. And I just, just got to wait, you know, to, to get out. He is truly a broken man. But at the same time, I can't forget that he's serving time for murder. Umberto, Umberto, I'm allowed to shake your hand. Thank you very much. Okay, thank I really you appreciate you. Okay. Thanks for being here. If you don't... Thanks for being so honest. All right. Okay. Take, care, you. take care of yourself now. Jesus. That is, without doubt, without question, the most daunting, most intimidating prison cell block that I have ever been inside. Even having been in there now, having seen what it's like to live in Echo Wing, I still cannot imagine what it would be like to spend 20 years in there. Coming up, it's visiting time in B Block. If you hadn't been caught, where would you be? Yes, I'd be dead. You'd be dead. Sí. And I meet the prison governor, who's forced to live in his own jail for safety. Por teléfono, I've received death threats in person. My name is Paul Connolly, and I've been spending time in Mexico's supermax lockup, El Hongo. Today, B Block is a hive of activity. So there's a lot, of, a lot of sprucing up going on this morning. A lot of the inmates getting their hair cut and their head shed because it is visitors' day today. Their families will be coming in, they'll get to see their kids, get to see their wives, girlfriends. So that's exciting stuff. That's their taste of the, of the outside world. Even for Ariel, whose connections and reputation protected me overnight, it's a big deal. And when you see him with his sister, well, it's hard to believe that he's serving 16 years for kidnapping. Is it a big, big day for you when your sister comes in? Very, very happy. Yeah. Can you tell? <laughs> you look very happy. So what age were you when you first got in here? I was 28. Describe who you were then. I was a man out of control. I do whatever I felt like doing. I was always doing something bad. If you weren't in here, where would you be? I would be dead. I would be dead. You'd be dead. So from the brother that first got arrested and put in here, has he changed? Oh yeah, of course. For like the past five years, I didn't visit him. He was an, another person. I guess he was very angry at life. Even speaking about it now seems to upset you. I'm happy. <laughs> so why does it make you sad? That even though he was in jail, he was more free than out there. Because you're afraid that somebody's gonna kill you. So when this happened, I was the happiest person ever. 
And I waited for him to, you know, realize that this God that I was talking to him, even though he didn't believe in him, yeah. he was, you know, answering my prayer. And it took like five years for me to come back and see the difference. There must have been a change in you. Something must have switched. What was it? Hablé conmigo. I talked to myself. Hablé con Dios. I talked to God. Y pues le pedí fuerzas a Dios para and I asked hacer God for cambio strength vida. to make a change in my life. And his eyes, I can see that finally he was seeing hope. Okay. Sister. What? I have something for you. Oh, what is it? Happy birthday, Miguel. This is your birthday. Happy birthday to you. Two. One for each year. That's nice. Thank you. Love you. Family contact helps keep inmates calm, and that makes riots less likely. But the director of El Hongo knows he can never let his guard down. He must have one of the most dangerous jobs in the whole of Mexico. So there's quite a lot of very impressive firepower in here. Can you can you talk me through what, what kind of weapons these are? Sí, bueno. yeah. This weapon is the one we're currently using. It's an ARX-160 Barretta rifle. Well, that's so it's lighter. It's lighter. Uh, and it's really easy to handle when it's cutting an inmate. So the fact that you do have high-profile cartel hitmen locked up here in this prison, personally, director, do you think that that makes you a target? Indeed, we know my job is dangerous. But I stayed loyal to my job, society, and the government, meaning I'm not corrupted by anyone. We're all at risk of losing our lives in this job, and I don't want to die. But if that's what really needs to happen for me to do my job properly, then so be it. I stick to my duty, but I always have a slight sense of fear. Since you've become director of El Hongo, it's become known as one of the most secure and, and certainly one of the least corrupt prisons in all of Mexico. So what, what have you done? We've laid the foundations. We've brought order, control, and transparency. We're controlling drug smuggling, which keeps people clean. What precautions now do you have to take to make sure that you, you stay alive? My family doesn't live here, and I don't go onto the streets too often. I live in this prison. I have my bedroom, my office, and I don't go out often. When we do, we carry our weapons and take some precautions. I have to find places outside the state or outside this country, such as the United States. That's where I go with my family so we can have some fun. And are your family scared that they might be attacked? Yes, they are. It's part of working for the prison system and in public security. Our families know what we do, and they're very proud of us. They also know there's some risk and that they might be a target. But we try to live a normal life with them. How many kids do you have? Um, that I can't tell you. So you can't tell me anything about your family, how many children you have if you're married. Your life is constantly in jeopardy. There are many people that would wonder why you do this. This is what I do to change society, protect Baja California from the people who are locked up in here. So it's a personal challenge. There's no doubt that the regime in El Hongo is incredibly strict. During my time here, I've met drug traffickers, kidnappers and murderers, all contained within this severe environment. A far cry from Mexican jails of old, where chaos and terror reigned supreme and the drug cartels were in control. With the most dangerous inmates now locked away in the hellish echo block, it seems the director and his staff are winning the battle. For now. I suppose my lasting impression is that this place is an example of order amongst chaos. And as long as the director here keeps corruption and keeps the influence of the...